The things I'm about to share in this video have been running through my mind for quite some time now, but it just seems like the perfect occasion with the NBA Finals and the Stanley Cup Finals both concluding within a matter of days apart for me to pass these along and make this video. Yes, part of this is a comparison of winning an NBA title and winning a Stanley Cup. These two tournaments have a lot in common, but yes, I also understand they are very unique and very different from each other. The similarities are obviously how many teams start, the way it finishes, the time it finishes, early summer and a season that started, heck, many months ago, October for both of these leagues. And yeah, it's difficult, right? You're playing about a quarter of a regular season extra after you've already played 82 games to try and win a title. Four rounds, always a best of seven. So yeah, the format is very much the same. But I also understand the common observation of what makes winning an NBA title different from winning a Stanley Cup. And that would be the regularity of the best teams, which make it to the final round in the NBA playoffs, versus the hottest teams, which make it to the final round of the NHL playoffs. Does that make sense? I hope so. I, I very specifically chose those words. Anyway, no matter how good you feel about your team going into the respective second season of the NBA or the NHL, that alone is usually not enough to win it all. Let me explain the three things, the three ways you can beat, you can best the NHL and the NBA playoffs. Number one, obviously, you have to be good. When I say that, it's not really a surprise, but you have to be good in so many different ways. For example, in key moments, taking advantage of opportunities. You have to be good consistently, right? You can't lose a couple of games in a row. Otherwise, you're chasing the series if you haven't lost it already. You also have to be good in a sense that no weak spots can be exposed. Because you're going up against the same opponent over and over and over in a series, which is not exactly what happens in the regular season of basketball or hockey, those weaknesses are much more easily exposed. Also, a sense of being good is about timing, right? You can't necessarily peak in your season too early. Sometimes a team will peak in the regular season, and that's not good. Other times they'll peak in round one or round two and then kind of fizzle out after that. I mean, this past season, take the NHL's Tampa Bay Lightning. They had far and away the best regular season record. In fact, they were the first NHL team to qualify for the postseason. They were also the very first to get eliminated, swept in four games of the first round. So you have to be good at the right time. But you also can't get away from what made you good and things that you are known for. For example, if you're just a super strong defensive team, and all of a sudden you're not playing that defensive brand of basketball or hockey in the playoffs, that's going to be an issue in the long term. So hopefully I've said enough about being good, right? It's such a simple idea, but there's just so much more depth to it when you really think about it. Number two on my list here of how to beat or best the NHL or NBA playoffs, you have to get some breaks. Not all of them, but some of them. You need whistles to go your way. You need suspensions to go your way if your series comes to that. Sometimes you need your opponent to miss one of their great opportunities. And quite honestly, sometimes if an opponent loses a player, that's also a break you can get on your side. Too many times luck is used as an insult to a championship team or one that's on a roll on the way seemingly to that title. It's not a bad thing if your group is deemed lucky because you have to be good to make your breaks. Not only that, you have to be good to take advantage of said breaks. Again, being lucky is a criticism that's like low hanging fruit. It's easy for an opponent or somebody that doesn't like your team to flat out say, oh, they're lucky and that's why they're here. Yes, some things may have gone their way, but you know how sports works. It'll all even out, and if things haven't gone the other way to counteract that already, they most certainly will, and everything will work itself out just as it's supposed to. My point is here, you do need breaks. You do need these opportunities that maybe you weren't expecting or that seemed like long shots at certain junctures. You need the breaks, and more importantly, you need to capitalize on them. 
I wouldn't say there's too many championship teams out there that got no breaks. All of them got something to go their way at some different point. Third and last here on my list is staying healthy. Now, in the NBA, there's obvious issues there, but certainly in a contact sport like the NHL, this is an obvious struggle. Because in a best of seven series, I mean, you could play 21 games before even getting to the final round. Now, this is an aspect where baseball and football, they're just not the same, right? Baseball is not a contact sport. And football, you only need to play a couple games to qualify for the Super Bowl. It's just a a totally different format here. So that's what makes basketball and hockey unique. The volume of games and, realistically, the more potential for injury. I want to go back to hockey specifically. It's a battle against attrition. Really, how long can your team look like it is supposed to in the playoffs without kind of crumbling and falling apart? And it also really brings up the importance of closing out a series when you have the opportunity. Because the more games you play, again, the more opportunity your team has to become injured. And you never know the magnitude of what player, what injury, and what could be the ultimate tipping point in a negative direction for your team if a player does suffer something serious. Closing it out here, I mean, personally, do I think the NHL and Stanley Cup playoffs are a bit too long? Yeah, the best of sevens are a haul. I'm talking about rounds one, two, and three just to get to four. And like I said, 20-something extra games in a playoff season. It feels like the start to finish of these go months and months, even though they're jam-packed into just about two months. But that's a lot of extra basketball and hockey to be asking of teams. And of course, it should be special to win the Stanley Cup or to win the Larry O'Brien Trophy. But it is just such a daunting journey. It really is in terms of quantity and exertion, what you have to put your body through to ultimately win it all.